Hello and welcome to Hudson Conmebol Qualifiers to the World Cup Match Day 7 in South America. We have our expert Leo Bachanian after celebrating Argentina's Copa America. We had a really interesting tournament. Leo, back to business, uh, to this uh, yes. World Cup Qualifiers. And we have, for instance, Brazil in danger. And we have a very interesting game, Argentina-Chile. Yes, hi Edu. Uh, amazing to, to see you again. Yes, back to business. It seems like we've been talking about the World Cup qualifiers like long, long time ago. Where actually, the last uh, two fixtures of the Commonwealth qualifiers they were in November 2023. By the time we get to Brazil's game, we're going to have to see that they lost the last three qualifying games. So strange to see, I mean, to say that uh, about Brazil. We have a very good Argentina Chile in, in Buenos Aires, which is going to be. Um, the farewell for uh, Di Maria. He's not in the squad, but he's going to be in the stadium for people to say thanks for everything. One of the three best players in Argentinian uh, history, definitely. And uh, the best game, uh, I would say, uh, is going to be the the one with the... Uh, uh, Brazil and Ecuador, yes, absolutely. I was going to say Uruguay and Paraguay, but no, it's, it's uh, Brazil and, and Ecuador. And we have uh, three new managers for this uh, match day seven in the Commonwealth qualifiers. Well, uh, you will tell me all the news in yep. South America. Really long way path to the World Cup, as always in South America. Remember, six go directly to the World Cup, the seventh need to play a playoff uh, and three will be out. There are more uh, spots uh, for South American teams in this uh, new format of the World Cup. So let's not waste any time. Remember, leave your comments, uh, press the like, subscribe. Leo, let's go on with the show. The first game, probably the less uh, spectacular, we can say, is uh, Bolivia-Venezuela. But I'm sure our Venezuelan friends uh, don't agree with this because they were very good in the Copa America, historic Copa America for them, winning all three games in the group stages, only losing to Canada in penalties. And also they are uh, in a correct way to play the first ever World Cup for Venezuela, nine points to win three draws. Bolivia is one of the worst teams of the continent. We saw it in the Copa America. And also, yeah. we are seeing this in the road to Mexico, USA and Canada. Leo, with only one win, we usually say that the altitude in La Paz could be an important factor, but it's not happening lately. Yes, and uh, we're going to have maybe to stop uh, talking about the altitude in, in La Paz because they now moved, Edu. They're not going to play in the in the Hernando Siles of, of La Paz. They're going to play in El Alto. They're going to play even higher. If uh, if La Paz is at 3,600 meters above the sea level, El Alto, where this game is going to be played in the municipal stadium of, of Beijing Ingenio, that is 4,300 meters above the sea level. Uh, yeah, you mentioned second from bottom with uh, with three points, courtesy of that last win in uh, in La Paz against uh, Peru. Bolivia, one of the three teams with the new manager, it was, as I was saying, they have replaced Zago, which wasn't given uh, too much time. Anyway, I don't think that he was going to turn things around. It's almost like uh, an impossible or very difficult task to, to manage Bolivia or, or to take Bolivia to a, to a World Cup, they have replaced him with uh, Oscar Villegas. Oscar Villegas, uh, I believe that he's like a, a it's been a, a bold decision because they went for someone uh, from their own ecosystem. Villegas is well known in Bolivia for managing uh, always uh, ready. It sounds like a Boy Scout uh, slogan, but no, it's a, it's a football team there. That in El Alto, that's why he knows the stadium. He knows where the match is going to it's going to be played. It's a bit like uh, the Groucho Marx. Uh, I have these principles. I, if you don't like, I have another ones. Oh, I have different ones. But the football in uh, Groucho Marx, no, like uh, I can play in La Paz. But if you don't like it, we can play even higher. No, something something like this for for Bolivia. It's a bit of an uncharted uh, territory for for anyone. This said because no one have played. Uh, at least at the national level, in such a higher, uh, such a high altitude, of course, that's what makes for the 
for the book is Bolivia the the favorites. There's no footballing reasons to believe anything uh, of what the odds are telling us uh, at the moment. I believe Venezuela is thinking like why we are the first to uh, to try this uh, this new altitude. Uh, but we are talking about a team which have lost. 12 of their last 14 games, including World Cup qualifiers, the Copa America, and also uh, international friendlies. Their only win being that 2 0 against Peru, which I mentioned before, and then a friendly against uh, Andorra. Uh, Venezuela at the back of an amazing uh, Copa America. Uh, they lost the chance of getting to the semi finals and penalties against uh, uh, Canada. But if we look at the form in the qualifiers, you know, the only the only bad thing I will point with Venezuela is that they drew uh, three of the last uh, four matches. The last two in uh, in November weren't that good. A draw uh, at home with Ecuador is still okay because we know the level of Ecuador. But then they drew away to to Peru, which uh, which wasn't great. Uh, I repeat, Bolivia our favorites here uh, because of the the uncertainty of the of the altitude of of La Paz. But I do not believe in uh, in their football to take anything or, or much from here. The odds on Bolivia to win is 190. But uh, I will go to double chance for Venezuela, which have similar odds, 1.95. And then my second ticket will be pointing to the goals market, goals under 2.5, odds of 1.80. I guess we won't see a great football game. Caracas is around 900 meters, El Alto, next to La Paz, as you said, 4,100 uh, is supposedly the highest uh, city in the world, major city in the world. This one in Bolivia is crazy to play a football game. In uh, these conditions, uh, another name, by the way, of a Bolivian team, funny one, the strongest. Leo, you have to believe in yourself <laughs> and they have a team. Uh, one of the best ones in the country, known as the strongest. Uh, well, let's go to the south, uh, Buenos Aires. Yeah. Uh, I guess much more pleasant than El Alto, <laughs> uh, Argentina, Chile, Argentina. After winning their second Copa America in the in a row, they keep going with this uh, amazing group. Uh, Copa America, World Cup, Copa America. It looks like almost impossible to and to defeat uh, Argentina to score a goal even against Argentina, but they lost, remember, one game in these qualifiers at home yeah. to nil against uh, Uruguay. The pressure, Leo, is going to be on Chile in the next games. I guess it's very difficult for them to get uh, anything from here, but they are out right now of the World Cup. Only five points, but we saw a very tight game in the Copa America between these two teams. Yes, uh, and actually, um, uh, Ricardo Gareca, Planned that game in uh, New Jersey in the in the Copa America uh, very well. Edu. What they lack, uh, I believe, that night in in New Jersey was that they lack uh, teeth uh, up front. I mean, for for Chile, um, and in that regard, uh, things look a little bit bleak for for El Tigre Edu, because Alexis Sanchez picked up an injury at the start of the season with uh, with the, with Udinese. He's back there. In, uh, in Udine. Uh, then on the weekend, uh, Diego Valdez, which is another starter for, for Gareca, uh, was left out of this uh, game against Argentina and then against uh, Bolivia because he got injured as well. Basically, we're going to have Ben uh, Brereton and Carlos Palacios probably leading the leading the line. Ben Brereton, uh, the highlight of, uh, of his summer has been to theatrically go down against uh, Newcastle in, in Sam James Park, pretended and Fabian Schar uh, had, uh, had batted him and he's going to lead the line in, in, in Buenos Aires. Uh, the good uh, news in terms of like the attacking players is that Edu Vargas scored on the weekend with Atletico Mineiro. Maybe that may give him a, a chance to, to play in the, in the starting 11. Uh, so in this context, the best player they will have to put Argentina in trouble, that will be uh, Dario Sorio, the, the striker that plays his uh, trade in, in, uh, in Denmark. So Argentina are my, my, my massive favourite for, for this one, Edu. Uh, as I said, it's going to be the first uh, squad without Di Maria and Messi for a very, very long time. Messi didn't get back yet to play with, um, with Inter Miami after he got injured in the final against uh, Colombia. It's going to be an emotional night, as I said the farewell for 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 Di Maria with Chile is going to be 
the start of a slow renovation as well do for for Argentina. We saw um, yesterday Valentin Barco playing from the start with with Sevilla, and he's going to be in the squad. And who knows, maybe he's going to start the game as well because Tagliafico is out injured. Uh, although Acuna was called uh, uh, last night, and alongside Barco, we're going to see names like uh, Matias Sule. Who played yesterday for Roma against uh, against Juve? He was called. Uh, Valentin Carboni is there again. Uh, Scaloni called Giuliano Simeone, who had a, a good uh, uh, Olympic Games with Macerano and, and Argentina, and he got his first uh, ever call. The surprise call I would say for me is uh, Valentin Tati Castigliano, who, who for sure you spoke about him with uh, with Danny Fisichella in the Italian shows, uh, Serie A shows, and he got as well. Uh, a first collab by um, by Scaloni. So far, so good for Argentina in the road to the World Cup 2026. Five wins out of six. That defeat against Uruguay in La Bombonera uh, for Chusilo, the only one where they couldn't get uh, any points. But if again, if I need to look at something negative with, with Argentina, it's like we still haven't seen in the last year that team that after winning the first Copa America in 2021 was being known by their by their um, high pressing, by playing combination football with their midfielders. And the problem now is like, when you look at their midfield line, Edu, the only one who is playing at a very high level at the moment with the club is Alexis McAllister, who yesterday excelled against Manchester United. But then Enzo Fernandez, Rodrigo De Paul, um, Ezequiel Palacios, they are all struggling at the moment at their club uh, level. Julian Alvarez did not have a good start neither with Atletico de Madrid. Uh, Lisandro Martinez uh, couldn't score yet with Inter this, this season, but I think he's going to lead the, the line. But again, Argentina, yes, favorites to, to win here, Edu. And I'm going to go back to my usual Argentine take, which is Argentina to win 2-0. That has odds of uh, 2 on average, on Ospedia's website, uh, a clean sheet is also has similar odds for for Argentina, one point eighty. Uh, but those who fancy the the goals market, my take is goals under two point five here, one point ninety. Only two goals uh, conceded in this uh, World Cup qualifiers yeah. for Argentina. All the wins were to nil. Let's see if they have full stomach. It's also very difficult. This thing has won absolutely everything for four years. Yeah. Uh, it's very difficult to keep uh, going and to keep the standards. But of course, Argentina super favorites. Uh, let's cross the La Plata River, Leo, and go to Montevideo. We have Uruguay. Paraguay, Uruguay, they showed in the Copa America that they are one of the best teams in the continent. Yeah. Right now, they reached the semifinals against uh, Colombia, but also in the qualifiers, they won the last three games uh, without uh, conceding, including Brazil and the game we just mentioned against Argentina. Paraguay yeah. on the other side, one of the poorest teams uh, in the continent, really bad. Uh, Copa America lost all all three games in the World Cup qualifiers, Leo, they struggle to score. Only one goal score, only three goals yeah. conceded. But in the Copa America, we saw all their games in both teams to score and high scoring games. Yes, at least they score in the in the in the Copa America. Paraguay, another one with the with the new coach um, Daniel Garnero was uh, has been replaced. Edu. With um, Gustavo Alfaro, we know Alfaro mostly for his time in, in in Ecuador. He just managed actually anyway in the Copa America as well, but he was managing a Concacaf team, Costa Rica. Now he's back to South America to come over to manage in this case uh, Paraguay. I think it's an upgrade Gustavo Alfaro on on Daniel or Daniel Garnero. Uh, hopefully Alfaro is not going to face any plagiarism uh, fine because during his first press conference and that was very funny. He used the same motivational uh, speech that when he was presented uh, in Ecuador now to talk about Paraguay. Exactly the same one, word by word. Uh, but well, at the end of the day, he just copied, he just copied himself. Uh, if Alfaro, I think it's going to make them uh, much more... Um, Organized team. That's what he does with the uh, with his teams usually. If he's the one that's going to take uh, this team uh, scoring goals, that maybe it's a, it's a different matter. Uh, 
Edu, uh, you mentioned one goal, one goal scored so far in in uh, in the in six qualifiers. And they have in Ramon Sosa, the Nottingham Forest uh, player, uh, the most important card at the moment because Miguel Almiron for a long time uh, has been away from his best form for club and country. And Adam Barreiro is not scoring at all in uh, in River Plate in, in Argentina. So it's going to be a very, very difficult night for, for Paraguay. Although, as you mentioned, the games in Copa America involve both teams to score. Uh, but in Montevideo, it will be interesting, Edu, on the other hand, to see Uruguay, because they will be without those sanctioned players. They're going to be without Darwin Nunes, who got five game suspension. They're going to be without Rodrigo Bentancur. They're going to be without Matias Oliveira, Ronald Araujo, Jose Maria Jimenez, uh, who got three games uh, banned each. Um, so the next time they want to fight, they should send to the stands, those players who usually do not play in the starting eleven, because now for uh, Bielsa is a bit of a conundrum, especially the back line, because I said uh, they're not going to have Araujo, Josema and Oliveira, who are suspended, but they also not going to have Matias Viña and uh, Joaquin Piqueres, two less back, because they are uh, they both got, uh, got injured. But at the end of the day, the good news is that Fede Valverde is on fire. For sure, you've seen his uh, back here to assist uh, last night uh, in Mbappe in the in the Bernabeu. Uh, he he started the season amazingly uh, as he finished last one. Fede Valverde, they're going to have Knight Hernandez as the right back. Maxi Araujo, the very good winger, also for sure, want to start in uh, against uh, Paraguay. They have uh, Manuel Ugarte, the most expensive Uruguayan player ever, who moved to, to Manchester United, although he still needs to make a, a debut there in, in the Premier League. Uh, during the Copa America, we talk a lot about uh, the amount of quality and uh, quantity that Bielsa has at his disposal. Yes, and not able to come with the suspended players is huge, but that this should not be an excuse uh, against uh, Paraguay. Uh, they score seven and non conceded in the last three wins for for Uruguay in the qualifiers to twenty into the World Cup twenty twenty six. Um, but the only on another mixed of good and bad news will be that tonight there is a press conference, Edu. And a press conference which was called uh, by Luis Suarez, the Uruguayan Football Federation, tweeted that tonight, Monday, there's going to be a press conference with uh, Luis Suarez. He's been called by Marcelo Bielsa. But the rumor says that tonight he's going to announce that uh, on Friday against um, Paraguay is going to be his last match for the for the national team. So it might become also the farewell for Lucho, who anyway he's still scoring he scored a brace in the on the weekend with Inter uh, Miami and we saw Uruguay starting fast and furious their games in the in the Copa America uh, Uruguay to win is at 1.57 there's not much there but Uruguay to win first half take the odds higher uh, 2.1 and also Uruguay to win and Uruguay to score first those two combine take the odds to 2.32. Uh, well, Di Maria, Luis Suarez saying uh, goodbye, probably, uh, this uh, week in South America to legends uh, in uh, yeah. world football. Next game, probably the most interesting one, as you said at the beginning, is Brazil-Ecuador, because uh, there are a lot of... Uh, but uh, mood in Brazil, the Copa America was a disappointment. They lost to Uruguay in penalties, only one win in the tournament. Also in this road to the World Cup, three defeats. Remember, yeah. uh, Dorival Jr. is still in charge. Uh, we saw Casemiro, for instance, being booed and criticized after his game against Liverpool with uh, Man United and some pressure then on the Verde Amarela to face Ecuador. They have more points. Ecuador, eight, and they did a good Copa America. They only lost to Argentina in penalties. And in this road to the World Cup, no defeats in the last five qualifier games. Yeah. Yes, and, uh, and Edu, uh, Ecuador will be the third team with the new manager because uh, Felix sanchez Vaz, the Spanish coach, is not there anymore. And now he's being replaced with uh, another Argentine uh, manager, in this case, Sebastián uh, uh, Becasese, uh, who maybe you know him because he 
key coach Elche uh, last season in the second division in Spain. He didn't manage to take them to the playoff, but he had at least a, a good first uh, semester with, with Elche Sebastián Becasese, uh, who was in the coaching staff of uh, San Paoli when Chile won the uh, the Copa America in 2014, and then he was still with San Paoli in the coaching staff when San Paoli took over Argentina in the World Cup in 2018. Uh, he had a good start of his managerial career years ago, Becasese, when he took Defensa y Justicia, a very uh, small team in, in Argentina, to a final of the of the of Copa Sudamericana. He took them to um, to a second uh, position finish in the Argentinian Argentina league then he managed uh, both independiente and, and racing but we're going to see he's never been tested at the at the national uh, team uh, level the, the thing for him Edu, he's not going to be measured uh, against uh, brazil even though brazil uh, is not enjoying the best time of their life of course uh, the most important game for ecuador or for beca Sese in this case will be for sure the second one match day eight when they face uh, peru uh, at home that's going to be the real test i believe for 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 beca Sese. And, and for Brazil, the last image we have uh, of Dorival Jr. is one where he's trying to see if anyone is leaving any space for him to participate uh, with the, the, with his players um, before the penalty shootout against uh, Uruguay in the in the Copa America. Seventeen names uh, who are in this squad to face uh, uh, Ecuador. Uh, they were present in the in the Copa America. We have uh, one of the new coming players is Estebao. 17 years of age and uh, got his first call up for for this match day seven and match day eight. Uh, another striker in this case, Luis Enrique from uh, Botafogo, also first call with with Brazil. Although he's a little bit more experienced, uh, Luis Enrique because he's 23 years old. Anyway, people talk a lot about Estebao in South America, in Europe as well, because he's been bought by Chelsea. So by the time Estebao turns 18 and he travels to to London to join um, Chelsea. He's going to become the 2,555 players of Chelsea's first team uh, squad. Uh, I don't, in my view, Stebao is not, uh, he doesn't have as a higher ceiling as Hendrik, I would say, but still a very good uh, uh, prospect, Stebao, he got his, his first call. Uh, they need to get back to winning ways, that's for sure. And those last three defeats, they were with um, Fernando Diniz, uh, but now, of course, the Fernando Diniz is back to 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 Fluminense. They're still waiting for Neymar to return. Hopefully, he's gonna play club football uh, in, uh, this month or, or next back. And everyone is waiting for Ney to to get back to to the national team. Uh, but still, I do here Brazil the 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 favorite, and and, and I agree. Uh, Brazil, I will be looking at Brazil to win second half. Odds of 1.75. And also looking at that second half, second half goals over 1.5, odds of 2.1. Brazil, they play in Paraguay the next game. Uh, and Hendrik, the one you mentioned, already making his debut in uh, Europe. And he's having an impact, actually, in every yep. game. He's playing with Real Madrid. He's having chances. He scored in his uh, debut at uh, Bernabeu. So um, time for him to keep growing, of course. And the last game in this uh, match day is Peru. Colombia, Colombia, they have two tough games. Eh? This one against Peru and then at home against Argentina in the best game of the next uh, round. Uh, Colombia with 12 points, three wins, three draws still to know the defeat. As we all know, they reach also the Copa America final, losing 1-0 against Argentina. Back then, the star of the tournament was James Rodriguez. We are yeah. seeing him at Rayo Vallecano training at a very, very slow level, I must uh, say. And Peru, Leo, one of the worst teams. Only two points. Uh, they are bottom of the table also in the Copa America. They couldn't score a goal and the last home exactly. game was a draw against Venezuela. So, Colombia, they should uh, get, I guess, the three points here. Yeah, absolutely. And I, and I can't see, I can't see uh, Peru inflicting any pain on, on Colombia. I can't see Peru uh, scoring basically against uh, Colombia. That's why one of my takes is going to be uh, Colombia to keep uh, a clean sheet because it has like uh, odds of 2.25. Uh, this Colombia at the back of an amazing Copa America, Nelson Lorenzo almost 
reaching the heights of uh, Francisco Maturana uh, in, in, in Colombia. If something changed also in, in the United States for Colombia is that uh, uh, they managed to, to score much more because uh, in the so far in the on the road to the World Cup 2026, Colombia scored six goals in six games, in six matches. However, in Copa America, they scored 12 goals in, uh, in, uh, in six games. Uh, of course, uh, James Rodriguez, who just signed with the uh, Rajo Vallecano, if I'm not uh, wrong, in, in, in La Liga, is in the squad. Um, the same for, for Luis Diaz, who yesterday scored a brace, three goals in, in the first three games in the Premier League for, for, uh, for Lucho Diaz. Um, they have uh, John Duran, which I think he can make a case to start the game against uh, Peru and might be possibly the only change we're going to see in the starting 11 when we compare the team that played in the in the Copa America. Um, John Duran playing up front. He scored on the weekend for, for, for Aston Villa. And every time Unai Emery uh, needs him or puts, him or puts him on the pitch, even for 10, 12, 20 minutes, he's there uh, scoring. He did the same in the first uh, game against uh, West Ham uh, at the beginning of, uh, of August. Uh, so all the potential is there for... For, uh, for Colombia to take the three points and keep building uh, momentum in this uh, road to the World Cup 2026. So, Edu, as I said, uh, that Colombia to, Colombia to keep a clean sheet for me is something to look at, odds of 2.25. And Colombia to win, Edu. Colombia to win, the odds are very good. 1.95 for the cafeteros to, to win uh, away from home. And also, I don't have personally, or haven't found yet, I think they are not uh, uh, up and running in the individual markets, but it will be worth having a look, I would say, uh, closer to, to the game on uh, Luis Diaz to score or, or to assist, uh, and James Rodriguez to assist or have at least uh, one shot on on, uh, on target. So those individual markets, I have had them in, in mind uh, before the game. Otherwise, Colombia to win and Colombia to keep an, a clean sheet against uh, Peru. Colombia to score from set pieces could be also as well. A, yes, a good, good one. option. Yes. Yeah. But uh, I saw very slow James Rodriguez to be honest training with Rayo Vallecano. Oh, yeah. He hasn't made his debut, but he looks like a retired football player uh, after some weeks uh, of video, yeah. rest, I guess, uh, after reaching the Copa America final. Uh, what a goal, especially the first one, eh, scored by Luis Diaz, totally in form with Liverpool. Well, Leo, this is it for all six games in South America. Tell me yeah. your best bet. Uh, my second will be Brazil to score first against Ecuador, odds of 1.36 there. And the ACA? Uh, the ACA includes uh, Argentina clean sheet, Brazil to score first, and Colombia to win. All these three odds of 4.77. Always learning from you, Leo. Thank you very much. Uh, happy My pleasure. to have the videos with you in South America. See you next week. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.